This video explains how to handle the ggplot2 error message data must be a data frame and not an integer vector using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example and this example is based on the data frame that we can create with lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set is appearing at the top right, which is called data. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line four of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our data set contains six rows and two columns called X and Y. And both of these columns contain numeric values. Now, if we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines six and seven of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line seven of the code. And then in the next step, we can draw our data using the ggplot and geompoint functions. So if we run lines nine and 10 of the code, we would expect that a scatter plot is shown at the bottom right. However, after running these lines of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the error message data must be a data frame or other object coercible by fortify, not an integer vector, is returned. And the reason for that is that within the ggplot function, we have specified only one of the columns of our data frame as the data argument. So in other words, we have inserted a vector object as the data argument. However, the ggplot function only takes data frames or as the error message states, other objects coercible by fortify as input data. So if we want to avoid this error message, we need to make sure that we are specifying a true data frame within the ggplot function as you can see in lines 12 and 13. So the only difference in these lines of code is that I'm using our entire data set for the data argument within the ggplot function. The remaining part of the code is exactly the same as in lines nine and 10. So after running lines 12 and 13 of the code, you can see that no error message is appearing anymore at the bottom in the RStudio console. And you can see that at the bottom right of our studio, our data is shown in a ggplot2 scatterplot. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.